Yo, what's up guys? This is Theo here and welcome to my first tutorial in getting started with JavaScript part one. And I've written about this a little bit on my website, the JavaScriptTutorials.com. If you'd like to, please go check it out, but don't feel free like you don't feel like you have to. Um, so basically this is gonna be a series of about 30 lessons where we're gonna try and go from very rudimentary JavaScript into uh, the depths of exploring, you know, the DOM, web APIs that are available to us, like set timeout, um, you know, browser APIs and uh, browser methods we can take advantage of, like local storage, um, and then hooking into external APIs. And maybe towards the end, you know, I haven't built out the full curriculum, but maybe towards the end we will uh, build out some sort of uh, web application with just vanilla JavaScript. So basically, you know, um, I'm going to pile all these videos together at the end, but in, um, you know, in this specific course, it's just vanilla JavaScript, so don't expect any frameworks. I really want you to understand how the language works, um, you know, in a very vanilla uh, fashion. So let's begin. In this lesson, which is um, lesson one, I'm going to explain to you um, variables and the different types available to us in JavaScript. So let's get started. In JavaScript, there are three ways that you can declare a variable. A variable. The first way is just to say the variable without using a var keyword. So in other words, if I wanted to create a variable called food, and then after that, I put an equal sign because I'm assigning this word, this, um, this key, right, to a value, and since JavaScript is a very flexible language, you can use double or single quotes. I've actually gotten in the habit lately, um, really I've only been coding for a little bit over a year, but I've gotten in the habit now of using single quotes, and again, this is just a stylistic choice, but I do find, um, you know, coming from a lot of other languages, or just reading a lot of open source code, um, seems like single quotes are definitely preferred. So anyways, if we have a food in here and we say pizza, we've now created this variable. And again, we're going to deal with um, what the console is later. But just know that when I call this um, method, when I write console.log, which is a function, basically just a set of instructions, and what this does is you could pass it an argument, okay? Basically, this is like a factory. We could pass it, um, you know, this little machine or this lever and it's going to output to us you know whatever we pass in right so we pass in food you know what does this give us back this gives us back pizza okay and because we haven't declared this anywhere or we haven't you know made this a private variable this is what's known as a variable located on the window right so here if i type in if i create that same method and i say window here Watch what happens, guys. If I hit enter, and if I go all the way up, I should be able to see my variable that I created on the window. So let me see if I can find it for us, guys. It'll be all the way up here. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. And we've got food, pizza. But um, let's see if we can find it up here. Okay. Might take a while. Let's actually look in our development tools and let's find it here. So, what we can do, we type window. Um, what we're going to get is we're going to get everything that the window has. This is just a big object, right? But if we come down here and let's see if we can find it, where would it be? Let's look. So, we got window.foo. It's undefined. So actually, guys, it's not actually, uh, I guess I can't find it on here because this is an external link. But, right, so let's just do it in, in the developer tools. So here, if we create this variable food, and we say pizza. Now, if I say food, it's pizza. But if we also qualify it with the window, here we go. Now it's the window object again. And we're going to look for food this time. So let's sort of scroll down, keep going. Here we go. Let's go up, and there we go. We got food. Okay, so food is now 
on this window object, which is basically a wrapper around the DOM, which again, we'll go into this later in detail, but just know that this variable is on the window object, okay? However, let's look at two other ways to declare a variable of food. Now, if we say var food is equal to pasta, what happens if we type in food? Food is now pasta, and if we type in window.food, now we've updated this variable, okay? So you might say, what's the difference? There's no difference there, but when you declare the variable without a var keyword, you're assigning it to the global context. And when I say global context, I mean the window context, right? So again, we're gonna explain functions later. Say I have a function called, uh, you know, uh, return food. And what this does, it's we're gonna use this method that we learned about, const.log. We're just gonna log food in here, okay? So if we call return food, what do we, what do you think we'll see? Okay, we're gonna see pasta. Okay, um, but if we go back in here and we const log this dot food, and we run return food, we still see pasta. Okay, and now if I come in here and type in var food is pizza, and I still run this method seeing pasta because again we'll go over this later but this this keyword is referring to the execution context in which this function was created so because this function is a member of the window object therefore the, this keyword is actually referring to um, it's going to be referring to the window and the window dot food again is pasta um, what we can do we can update our method right here and look at this variable, right? And this will just return food. Okay, so now if I do return food, we get pizza. And so we don't actually have access to this variable. This is what's known as a private variable within, within this method, okay? Sure, we can see, uh, we, we can see this method right here, but we can't actually update or, or read this variable. Okay, so with that said, um, the last type of variable that we can have is a variable uh, scoped specifically to an object. So an object in JavaScript is like a dictionary with a key value pair, and basically we can create it doing these empty braces, or we can say new object, but to keep it simple, let's use the empty braces. And now here, if we type in object, what we get back is an object. We and we get its prototype, and we'll talk about that later, right? But if we say inside of our object, if we create a method called uh, get this context, and again we'll learn about all this later. I just want to prove a point here, so we can look at, you know, what does this refer to now? Okay, so now here. We say our object, we have our object, and we have our method on our object. If we call it get this context, oh, that's interesting. Now it's an object because this a variable now is locally scoped to the object. Okay, so let's move on. We've looked at three ways to define a variable, and let's look at a little bit more of you know, the nuances and in ins and outs of defining variables, right? So say we have a variable of food, or in this case we'll say sport, and now if we type in sport, because we haven't defined anything, it will just say undefined, right? We've allocated memory for it, but we actually have not assigned anything. And the reason why you're getting undefined for this is because console.log doesn't actually return anything or what we pass in doesn't return anything so there's no return value okay but if we were to just say in here for sport equals return sports okay that's not going to work we probably have to make it a function my bad so we'll say for function sports and sorry about that and inside of here we can just say return sports so now what happens when we console.log sports 
is we get sports and undefined. Okay, so we're always going to get this undefined because the native implementation of console.log does not return anything. So therefore, this will result in undefined. Okay, so we can allocate memory for a variable without declaring it, but what happens, okay, um, in this situation where we create a method and it's called get sport. And what it's going to do is it's going to return sport. Okay. But we haven't defined sport yet. So we're just going to say var sport equals soccer. And now if we say get sport, what do we expect to see? Well, we expect to see soccer. Why? Because in JavaScript, variables are hoisted to the top of the, the um, execution context. What I mean by that is before the engine runs, all variables are moved to the top. Um, if this is a function uh, declaration, okay, and then this will get the value of this um, global variable sport. However, if we create this method var get food, this was this is what's known as a variable function expression because we're storing a function inside of this uh, variable. And this is just going to return food. And if I create a method here called, or a variable here called food, um, and I'm going to say, um, again, pasta. And if we say get food, what do we expect to see? We get pasta. So that works, right? Let's try something different. Let's try something where here um, we declare a variable. Um, Let's look at this. We declare a variable called, um, let's see, age, let's say 23, my age. So now we can access age, right? Um, but if we, you know, create this method down here called var get age, it's a function, and we just want to return age. Let's say get age, we get 23. Let's try to invoke a a method that doesn't exist yet. Okay, or let's do this opposite thing around. So we'll say var get grade is a function, and this will return a variable called grade. So now when we say get grade, we're going to get a reference error. Grade is not defined. Uh, however, if we call grade here and we say a now if we run this again, we get A, okay, so that's good. Um, all of that works out for us, okay. Um, the last thing I want to discuss in this video are the different types in JavaScript, okay, and I want to discuss this using what's called the type of operator. So anytime you want to know what type of variable uh, you're dealing with, you can use the type of. The type of has a few um, sort of uh, downsides to using it, but let me show it out. So we have type of A, what should we expect to see? We should see string, okay. We have type 23, that should be a number. Here's an empty array, we get object, okay. So that's not really that descriptive, you know. Type of object, that could also be an object right there, or, you know, type of number, that's a function, huh? Well, that's not really that descriptive, or, you know, type of not a number, what do we get? We get a number, okay? So those aren't that descriptive. So let me give you a sort of hint I wish I knew when I started out. So we can build this method, a little helper method, and it's gonna return to us the type. And the way we can do this, and again, um, I don't expect you to understand all of this, but the way we can do this is we can have this take in a variable, and this will just be variable. And what we're going to do is we're going to access the built-in object type and we're going to call, we're going to grab its prototype, which is basically just all the methods that it inherits, you know, when it's being created. We'll go over prototypes later. And then we're going to say toString. toString is a method that generally just returns um, the value of the current instance as a string. And we're going to call dot call not call, we'll learn about this later. Let's just set the context of this variable. In other words, if we want to call 
a function with a specific context. This will let us do that. And inside of dot call, okay, instead of passing in, you know, the object, we want to call it on the variable, okay? So with all of that, if we say now if we say get type and we pass in this array, we get object array. Okay, so that's more descriptive. And similarly, if we pass in an empty object, object object, okay, that's good. Get type number object function, that's a little bit more descriptive. And you know, if we do not a number, object number. Okay. So these are a little bit more detailed than you know just always saying object. Um, all right, and finally, let me walk through all the different types. In JavaScript, we can create an array, which is created either with these uh, brackets, or we can say new array. Again, we'll go over all of this. Um, we can create objects. We can create numbers. We can create strings, and we can also, um, let's see, arrays, objects, numbers, words. Um, I think those are the main types I wanted to discuss. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and let me know what you think. If you guys enjoy it, I will keep going with lesson two, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.